So the other day I did a little video and I mentioned calling in ancestors and the connection there in relation to setting up sacred space for ritual and ceremony and uh, I just wanted to pick up on that thread today and mention it again. Um, so spoke a little bit about how we think of ancestors, how we might define them. So we could be talking in terms of our lineage, our bloodline, um, our direct um, uh, connections there, but then also our kind of spiritual ancestors. This could be um, where we feel akin to, where we feel called to researching um, and bridging connections with. So you might feel called to a particular culture or a particular kind of music that is very much um, of, of a place that is not connected to you. So that I like to think of that as our, um, our spiritual ancestors, if you like. So it might not be our direct um, relations, but we, we still have a, a connection there and we're living vicariously through and trying to find meaning and connection through uh, traditions, cultures and practices that have maybe been lost and uh, perhaps in our own culture we have lost much of our oral tradition, um, our songs, our story weaving and uh, other cultures have that better preserved so it's it's a way for us to find and access um, establishing a relationship again with ancestral energy which I think is is really important um, for your sense of place and feeling of home and then we think of like ancestors of place as well so I think of this very much in terms of like a connection to land somewhere that you feel rooted and grounded and it doesn't have to be somewhere that you were born although that is like really powerful um especially if you have family ties to an area or if you were brought up in say and live in the house that you were born in um and that's something that's been passed down through the generations there's undeniably a really really strong link there but thinking more of places that you come to live or are drawn to visit, um, somewhere that you feel called to or somewhere um, that the land really speaks to you um, and, and there's a strong sense of, yeah, just like feeling at rest, at peace, at home. And so I think of ancestors of place really there are like guardians and gatekeepers and um, caretakers of the land wherever we go. And there are people doing that in the physical realm uh, that are living, breathing beings um, that are uh, focused and that's part of, of their work and their devotion. But then we also have keepers of place and spirits of place as well. So I think of ancestors of place are almost like um, those that have not crossed over and they are living through and breathing through the trees, the rocks, the earth. Um, that is where they have chosen to, um, not to rest fully, but just to be present and to continue living, to continue representing a space um, and overseeing it. So I just wanted to mention that because I've come to a little point in my walk where I've got two super strong uh, power points where I feel this is present. So behind me there, this hill um, is a stand of oak trees. So this glen, this entire glen at one time it goes miles and miles up that way, was covered in ancient oak woodland, which was all cleared, we think, uh, First World War, which should have been used for shipbuilding. Um, and these are like really mature big trees up on the hill here. And I just feel such a strong connection to them. They are, they're beautiful, 
kind of deeply rooted feminine quality of energy and I just every time I go past I feel I feel like they're they're sisters on the hill so um I kind of give them a little acknowledgement on my on my way past on my walk and then we come to this um stand of birch trees um just behind me here so and they're nicely spread out like these ones have been thinned in the past and I just have such a strong sense when I come here that these are my kith and kin these are these are <laughs> my family um, and I have a really strong connection with the land here I come up this glen when I'm here I come up this glen every day and uh, yeah you you become familiar with your environment and you notice qualities and features about a place and you're maybe drawn to a certain area and at a superficial level you can think okay why why is that like maybe there's a nice um, feature or something going on and if you're interested in landscape and geology geography then there's that element but then on a deeper level the sort of emotional pang that you get when you um, tap into a place and, and begin to connect with it in a deeper way that's something it's hard to describe and pinpoint um, and I only mention it to to highlight it as something that's just it feels really nourishing and really like rewarding um, and yeah just beginning to explore those feelings and emotions around like okay like I feel like I, I know this place I feel like I belong here and then just spiraling on that kind of research internal research journey a bit deeper like okay what what does belonging mean to me if it's about place is it about family and um you know you you start to build a relationship with your your natural environment and it's very much um like the the worldview of animism of everything having consciousness and and being awake and alive um and that extends to to everything to plants to rocks to trees of course and trees are are just amazing because they are just um they're so expressive in their shape and form and um yeah they they all have characters they all have uh unique <laughs> qualities just just like we do as well so um on my my little ramblings and wanderings I do sort of find myself more and more tuning into the space and I'm just like oh yeah I want to say hello to my favorite tree or and then I'm like oh god right I can't have a favorite tree that's they're all my favorites but you you, <laughs> you develop uh stronger relationships with other ones for for different reasons and then yeah just noticing the shifts and the cycles with the seasons as well like everything that changes and evolves and grows so the character of something you feel that you know so well suddenly becomes different like this is normally a wee babbling brook here but today it's sort of growing into a a more flowing So just like from a, a musical point of view, um, really letting the space be the teacher, if you're willing to listen, um, there's the story of the river. So like it's just the imagination, like giving yourself an opportunity to really hear like what is being expressed, like 
with the with the weather, with everything like changing so quickly, what what is like calm and restful and just gentle one day can become like a, a raging torrent the next day. And uh, I think just like connecting with the natural frequencies and it's like you're making that relationship and engagement in a way that seems at first like really obvious like okay yeah there's been lots of rain there's more water there's more volume there's more speed there's more velocity there's there's more noise but the point is that the the narrative is always changing and it's always in relationship to something else so there's like a cause and effect dynamic going on with everything and um yeah, like the more I connect with a natural space and tune into that, I think the more at ease I feel in myself with like the fluctuations of moods, of like perspectives and ideas, things change from moment to moment. Um, and it's not just seasonally, it's like over the course of a day, you know? So um, yeah, there's, there's wisdom in these there hills. Um, so, and just, yeah, like connecting with these natural sounds, it is soothing. It, there's no question about it. And uh, something that I really was absolutely loving to do in uh, when I was in Mongolia was just like listen <laughs> more intently because it was a new a new land a new environment and place and uh, I have a really strong connection to the land here so I was really looking forward to coming into a completely new world with this open-mindedness and curiosity um, based on just what I do here but then with this additional uh, like depth of inquiry about sound and uh, how can I really get into the sound of a place and begin to understand it so there's like the learning and acquisition of language and looking at semantics and just the basic elements of frequency and how it's formed and what that feels like. But then there's the trying to then make the connection with the, the origin place of those sounds and um, doing that through really deeply, immersively connecting with the land uh, because you know, dialect and other qualities within linguistics and of course music are inspired by, derived from uh, our environments and uh, yeah, so that like intense quality of listening as a way to try and more fully understand sound and um, like my relationship to sound and how I form sound by going on like a, a new learning journey with trying to <laughs> acquire like a, another strand or layer of frequency. I feel like now that I'm back in my, my homeland so to speak, uh, the, the quality of listening is just like uh, opened up tenfold because your your horizons have been expanded and uh, Mongolia is a very big place Scotland is a very small wee place so um, like it's almost like having the uh, the volume turned up in your sort of uh, auditory perception uh, perception of of frequency and energy um, 
and yeah and I'm like loving today because I don't know if you can see the little white trail which is the river behind me but um there's been loads <laughs> loads of rain here so like the glen today is just like whoosh, whoosh, which is amazing it's like totally um invigorating sound so yeah just wanted to take you guys on a wee uh miniature journey with me and uh talk about listening for a moment and uh i'm gonna carry on my adventure and uh speak to you soon